Today, I'm going to share with you my Digital Forensic Investigation Report template that I usually use in my investigations and my students use in their coursework. In today's video, I will go through each section, what you should write and what you should include within each section. Let's get into that. Remember, digital forensic report, there's two types of digital forensic report. There's an expert opinion digital forensic report and there's a fact digital forensic report. In today's session, we are going to through the expert opinion digital forensic report. However, both of them are similar, one with your opinion based on your expertise and one the other without any opinion, just technical analysis. Within your digital forensic report, you have to have a cover page that should include the case against, again, against who, this case, case number, whoever create the report, that means the examiner name, and if you have any qualification, type it after that. Let's say examiner name, my name is Nebras al I will write Nebras al then after that space, PhD, that means you have PhD, and then MC, and so and so okay the qualification shorts thing then if you are company name right yeah write the company name and the address line first address line and the second or you can include the postcode and the full address you should include it here then follow it with date of investigation and the date that report compiled it and then don't forget to add endorsement to your report and to confirm that this investigation has been done by you or by your team and also you can confirm the investigation is conducted according to let's say ACBO guideline if you are in UK or in any other guideline if you are outside the UK and also you can confirm that the opinion is that presented in this report is your own opinion and based on the facts that you found within the evidence then sign and date. This is the cover page. When we talk about cover page, this is what we mean by cover page. However, within within the cover page, you can add, if you're a student, you can add the logo of the university. If you work for law firm or law enforcement, then add your logo of your organization. Then, what after the cover page? My way is to add executive summary add executive summary just after the cover page executive summary in research is like abstract it's the high level overview of what you manage to find within the evidence remember that executive summary should summarize whatever you manage to find in easy way non-technical way usually executive summary will target non-technical people like you your line manager, CEO, lawyer, anyone in the court, or anyone doesn't have any technical knowledge, or anyone just need to know what's going on, what you have managed to do, and the summary of your finding. What you should include within executive summary? You can include many things, but make sure your executive summary is short. Don't exceed, it's depend on the case, but for me, don't go over one page, okay? But if the case has many evidence sources, yes, you can have exact summary, two pages or whatever it is, but make sure it's the shortest as possible. With an executive summary, you should include the scope and why you need to do this investigation. Try to mention the data range of your investigation and why you need to do the investigation outline the main finding of the investigation highlight the significant evidence and artifacts that you discover and then summarize it sum up the overview of your finding okay make it very simple and easy to read remember your audience usually are not digital forensic experts Okay, make it simple for them to read. Then what, what after executive summary? 
after executive summary you should have table of content okay you should have the table of content this is where the reader know each section where exactly within your report and if they are interesting on the graphic timeline uh, timeline of the incidents they just go straight away to page five they don't need to read everything okay they not need to read everything and make sure you update it all the time when you make any change then very important section you should have in your report is that is your cv your information who you are who's the investigator what your skills what's your experience uh, number of years of experience what qualification you have what kind of training you have uh, do you have any membership any membership try to add your linkedin page google scholar if you are a researcher and so on so on so this is very very important okay because based on this information the reader will know how accurate is the report and will know your experience on the field of the investigation because remember this report we are asking for your opinion expert opinion that means write a couple of sentences explain your experience your knowledge in the area training and so and so and so okay and this usually one page okay usually one page and if there is more than one investigator who investigating in this incident or, or this case make sure you add all of them and their role within the investigation then the other section other page let's say the purpose of the investigation make sure you type here the case background this you can get it from the case brief that handle it to you when they handle you the evidence try here to add why do you need to investigate and what is the scope of the investigation remember the scope of investigation is very important because the time is money and you cannot waste your time looking for something outside the scope of the investigation the other section section 3 the target system and devices let's say you have a different evidence two computers three computer images yeah write them here R write a description of each of your evidence try to add photos let's say you have three hard drives make sure to f uh, to add serial number of this hard drive add the pictures of hard drive if you have phones make sure you have a picture of phones the brand of the phone i m e i number of the phone if, if it's that valuable any information just type it here on the target system if you have let's say memory dump if you have network files put all of these devices or target system within this section keep it clear other section which is very important is the softwares that you're going to use within your investigation make sure to write down exactly what softwares you are going to use within your investigation an example of that let's say I am going to use open text at in case you need to make sure to write like let's say open text at in case I'm going to use the reference format IEEE reference format and then number one and then you are going to use volatility for live forensic you say memory volatility memory extraction utility framework and number two and then the reader can know exactly what version of the tool you are going to use by just going to the reference section the last section of your report should be a reference not the last the one before okay let's say we mention one i'm using IEEE reference format i'm saying here open text it okay it's in case 23.3 this is the software i'm i'm using and this is the website where you can get more information about uh, the software you can download and buy the key and so on and then the second one is the volatility and this is exactly the version of volatility tool i'm going to use and this is the website you can access make sure referencing and citation is very important to your tools because anyone after you should be able to get the same result what you get using the same tools that we are using okay with this i think it's two three four paragraphs half page 
uh, it depends on the tools you use, okay? And num number of evidence and tools you are using. Then section uh, five, which is another important section in digital forensic report, is the methodology you use, okay? The methodology you use. There is many different methodology are there when it comes with digital investigation. Whatever methodology you use, you should write it here and make sure you cite it, okay? Make sure you have a reference for that methodology. Reference for that methodology. Don't just write a methodology that come from nowhere, okay? You have to have a reference for that methodology. And, and there is some steps some can uh, follow, but yeah, I will keep this one uh, for you to, to uh, find more information about this, uh, the steps I'm going to take. Another section, which is very, very important, okay, for anyone who's going to read your report, is the graphical timeline of the incidents. By converting your findings into graphic timeline, it will make very, very easy for the reader to understand what's going on, okay, and to understand what's going on. This graphical timeline, for uh, this case, you can go and view the case from the NIST website. Okay, the NIST website is very uh, easy to understand and easy to follow. You can go to data leakage case and try to create your own graphical timeline. But listen, if you know any tool that create a graphical timeline like this or better than this, please write it down in the comment and then we can share it with with the other. Chapter seven, you need to explain how you collect the evidence. Did you create images to um, the hard drive, let's say, USB? Did you, uh, did you capture a network? Did you create a memory dump? Did you take an image, physical or logical image from mobile phone? All of these steps, you should explain it within this section. If there is any hash value, you should include it here as well. Then the most important section, okay? The most important section is the analysis of the evidence. Okay, this is the biggest and the most detailed technical analysis section of the whole of your evidence, of your digital evidence report. This is where you're going to analyze each evidence you have, technically analyze using the tools that you have, and then present your findings. Okay, present your findings. Within this section, make sure you back up anything you say with screenshots. Okay, with the screenshots. If you feel too many screenshots with this section. Yes, you can use cross-referencing the images and put them in the appendix. Put them in the appendix. Let's say appendix one, appendix two, appendix three, and so on. Okay, and make sure you cross-reference. That means you redirect the reader from the paragraph within this section to the appendix, the, the right picture. Yes, also make sure to cross-reference anything. That means if you have a table or you have um, a picture, make sure within the text set, you mention that, let's say, table one, demonstrate this or show this and this, this. Figure one shows this and this and that. Make sure you redirect the reader to the right picture or the appendix or a table or whatever you have, okay? Yeah, if I'm going to speak about analysis of the evidence, I will spend the next one hour, but I'm not going to to explain too much right now, okay? And here, where is another very important section where you're going to write your opinion. But remember, if they don't ask you to write your opinion or provide your opinion, don't write this section. You may have just conclusion section where you discuss the previous technical finding based on a fact, but if they ask for opinion, you should have this section that summarizes your finding and your opinion with that, based on your experience and the facts that you found within the evidence. Also, after you manage to create your opinion, you can create another section 
after that call it a summary or conclusion okay summary and conclusion of the case then after that usually what I do I will add the references and then appendixes remember there is many many other ways maybe I missed some section here or there but I done on purpose because we cannot include everything and it depends on your organization policy or if you are a student who write a coursework it depends on your model leader requirement read your coursework and find out what the model leader require in your report they may not ask for opinion okay thank you very much and see you in the next video